and welcome to another hobby cheating video and today we're going to talk about doing heavy conversions and as you can see we're going to be using a giant so we're going to start with the stuff you need and of course if we're going to do some heavy converting the first thing we need is bits now i have a sort of frankensteinian monster uh look that i'm going for and converting to so i went through all my bits and i went through and found tubes and mechanical parts and stuff like that and made a big old pile Having extra bits from the kit itself, for example, here's my extra uh, Mega Gargant bits, just in case you need those. You know, having extra bits of the existing kit can also be helpful. Uh, but of course, then we're going to need something to put it together with. So, and our main tool is going to be Sprue Goo. Sprue Goo is Tamiya Extra Thin Cement with a bunch of plastic sprue melted into it. You will see I use this as my main adhesive for this or because this because it's like painting with plastic we're also going to use some super glue i have both normal uh, ca glue and super thin we also have just some chain this is jeweler's chain you can order it uh you know on yeah, online and i've got some fun cogs you can get these from like little jewelry parts or watch parts or stuff like that and some sandpaper to file it all down so with our tools in hand Let's get going. So we start with the giant body itself. Now, one important note that you always want to have uh, when you're thinking about doing large or heavy conversions is that when you start with your individual pieces, make sure that you still clean the piece first. Because as you're going to start chopping and changing, it's going to become more difficult. So the first thing we did in attaching this is we're going to get out our sprue goo and you see that I'm just painting down this famously awful joint on the side of the giant. Now the cool part about sprue goo is that it's just painting with plastic. I said it once, I'll say it again. It is painting with plastic because when that hardens and shrinks a little bit and the glue evaporates, it's just going to harden into plastic glue and it will sink and settle into the plastic some. But now I have nice, like those joint lines are just gone. When I prime over them, you won't be able to see them at all. And if you ever need to smooth them down or anything, you can always just take your normal extra thin and just kind of run it over top. So now begins the great mission. Some people sometimes ask me like, do you have a vision when you start for what the thing is gonna be? No, almost never. I have no idea what any of these giants are gonna be when I start them. You know, sometimes I've got kind of a concept of what I'm aiming at on some of my conversions, but oftentimes I do not. So the first thing I'm doing with my torso here is just grabbing some bits and just kind of seeing what fits where, what looks interesting and be crazy. Like there I grabbed the big triangle thing from, I think that's like a Talos or something. And I said, well, could I put it over his head and make him like a pyramid head? That could be funny, right? Uh, so I just keep trying pieces until I find something that I like the look of. Next lesson here. So you notice I, this is like one of the connector pieces from a KO boat that I had extra from my Cities of Sigmar project. I, When I held that up to him, I realized the top part of that really looked like a cool smokestack. It's a very different sort of smokestack, but nonetheless, it's a little smokestack. So it was a really cool chance to just do something unusual with a bit. And that's part of the key. Don't ever be afraid to start chopping up your bits and only use a small part of it, right? Um, in this case, I didn't have to use the whole thing. When I chopped it up, I made a real fun little smokestack piece. So here, I'm just going ahead and attaching those two smoke tacks, smoke stacks to his back with plastic glue okay with my sprue goo and again yes you can use this to assemble as well all right so i put that on there make sure they're nicely attached and then i'm going to take that sprue goo and i'm just going to trace it right around the outside so that we get a nice smooth adherence what's cool when you're doing organic um organic conversions like this is that the sprue goo ends up looking like more flesh. 
So this is actually a really easy kind of conversion to make sort of Frankensteinian type monsters with the uh, with the sprue goo because you're effectively painting more flesh on, so you can make it look like stretched flesh over the metal or something like that. Really, it's just a cool, easy way to do it. And it looks right. Uh, here's another piece where I I knew I wanted their arms to be weird. All of my giants have like you know weird arms and weird legs and stuff like that because they're meant to be these weird horror monsters. And so I took part of the leg of a soul grinder, cut off one piece, smoothed that all down, and I thought, oh, this would make a neat arm, right? Or, or the upper part of an arm or whatever we want to say. Then once I sort of established how the joint is going to fit there, I cut off the shoulder because I didn't need that piece. I wanted this to connect, or, or cut off, the, sorry, the upper bicep. So I wanted this to connect directly to the shoulder. And again, we're just sprue gooing it up. And then bada boom, we drop it on there and it uh, it holds. Make the sprue goo will dry in just a few seconds. Now, please note, you notice when I put more sprue goo on there, that's when it fell from its position. That's what will happen. When you put more plastic glue into the location, you will weaken the existing bond because you're introducing more of the uh, chemical solvent into everything. So, but now that's all attached and dry. By the way, this process takes actually quite a while. Like this is over several, this whole giant took me several hours to do because I'm letting things dry in between. I'm testing pieces. I'm putting stuff together off camera. The whole like where you saw me hold up a couple of pieces and see what I liked, that is a constant thing throughout this process. And oftentimes when you're doing big crazy conversions, that's what you'll be doing. Even some when I have a vision, like when I did my big, Archaeon conversion for Slanesh, where I knew that I wanted to have uh, a Lariel on top converted into a uh, into my Archeon. Um, that was still a ton of little testing and little changes and stuff like that. Here, I'm just trying to get these two tentacles to balance. This is a nice, fun little thing there. The goo will do it. It will hold in place, but I've got to sit here and hold them for a little while to make sure that they dry. So there we go, all dry. I also added in the third tentacle to brace that, and I really like how that looks. But now the challenge is I've got this little gap, this like hole in the tentacles where it looks like there should be something, but there's nothing, there's just a big hole. Haha. -ha. Well, then we put in more bits, more grieving, never stop grieving. So here I grabbed one of my handy dandy tubes, and I'm gonna drop that right down in the hole and connect it up to the arm. And moreover, now that just feels, to me, even better because when you're sort of connecting pseudo-organic parts to non-organic parts, it feels like there should be a tube there that's pumping some kind of vital fluid or something in there, right? And once again, you'll notice that I use the sprue goo to, uh, to on, the, on the bottom to attach it, and then also I run a tiny bit of it around the base as well. So now we're just going to very quickly... Uh, mess around with the head. I went ahead and attached the um, his little collar. I put his little collar around him. And now I'm going to put his tongue on, and now we're going to put his head on. Now, up to this point, we're still normal. Right? Like, this is just the standard model. Uh, I'm going to use the Chaos Giant head for reasons you'll see here in just a moment. Because uh, I, I wanted all their faces to be interesting. Uh, but this is another example of me covering one of these really, really, really horrible gaps that occurs in these giants. Oftentimes these giants, the neck and how it connects to the head has this like really horrible gap. So I found this little piece. This is out of, um, oh gosh, I think this is out of a, um, one of the Admech kits. And I thought it just looked like a cool, weird sci-fi sort of eye cover, face cover thing. And so I test fit it fit rather well said great i love this so now we're just going to go ahead and stick that on his head so he's got a little mask on right I, by the way I, I love how goofy he looks with this this mask on it's one of my favorite conversions i've done this just makes me smile even looking back on this now uh so now he's got a cool mask but yet again we need to connect that mask to the rest of him so a lot of what you're doing when you're grieving, and grieving is just adding on these extra little bits, you know, comes out of scale modeling where you take like an existing tiny robot kit or, a, a, you know, a matchbox car or some scale model kit like a plane, and you grieve it, which just means adding a bunch of extra bits to turn it into something that's like sci-fi or whatever. 
it was used a lot that's how a lot of like movie set uh models are made they'll take existing kits and then they'll just grieb them to high heck and back like original star destroyers and stuff like that um so at any rate uh it's just always adding more stuff to either cover things that look weird or to make things look consistent or whatever so with the tube running into the mask and then into his head now we've got a nice little play so I, with the giant leg, I glued it together and then I cut it uh, off. Like I, or sorry, I, I apologize. Flip that, strike that, reverse it. <laughs> I cut the two pieces at the same point, then I glued it all together. That's what I was trying to say. Oftentimes, if you've ever got a front and back of something like an arm or a leg, it can be really nice to do the cut before you glue it together because then it's much easier to cut. So... Once again, just attach that leg with some sprugu, and now we're going to give him a peg leg. Uh, but I didn't just want any normal peg leg. I wanted it to be a big knife, which seemed cool. Because, you know, part of what giants do is kick and stomp people. And so kicking somebody with a giant sword blade uh, would, would seem fun. I would also point out that this giant blade is from the soul grinder leg that I cut in half earlier to make his arm. So when you chop existing bits into pieces, there's no reason to just immediately throw the rest of that away. It can oftentimes be the case that those remaining bits could still have a lot of value. Okay. Sometimes when we're doing heavy conversions, we just can't get there completely on sprue goo or plastic glue or whatever alone. Sometimes we've got to go a little farther. So here with this arm, you'll notice that I'm going to attach the arm to the joint with the sprue goo as normal, but I have a pin running out of the lower arm. And that pin running out of the lower arm is, of course, so I can connect the big giant chainsaw. Uh... And yes, he's going to have a big giant chainsaw. And no, I don't think it's 240k. There are quite literally KO people running around with chainsaws, sawing people up. Athermatic saws. So I'm perfectly okay with this guy having a chainsaw as well. Uh, but the point was that chainsaw was so big and long and the connection point was so small, I couldn't attach it just through the glue. So you saw how I made sure the pin was there. It went into the hole. I, and then I still plastic glued around it, and then I still filled the seam that was there with plastic glue as well. Again, painting with plastic. When that solidifies, all the plastic parts are going to touch. It doesn't matter that there was a metal pin there. I didn't need to use traditional glue. Now, the joint between the shoulder and the arm looked a little goofy and stretched, so we're going to do what we do, which is we grieb. So I covered it up with, again, I think this is from the, another AdMet kit. And then I put a little, a uh, couple little pieces into those open spots to make it look like the shoulder pad has something going on. Uh, the little, the little rock power thing, as I think from the, um, I'm pretty sure that's from the Hell Pit Abomination uh, in Skaven. And that's just it. Cast a wide net. When you're thinking about your bits... Cast a wide net, okay? Uh, so here I'm just, again, continuing to grieb. Now we're into the grieving phase completely, where I'm adding a lot of additional stuff just to break up surfaces to make him feel more converted. So, and in theme. For example, here, because I've got this Frankensteinian concept, he has tubes running out all over him. Let's say, however, I had almost the opposite concept. Let's say I had a concept like uh, they were given into nature or were like swamp monsters, and I was combining it with Sylvanet kits. That could be certainly doable with your giant kits. Then I would be working in pieces of bark or flowers or tree branches growing out of their back or something like that, right? The point being is that when you're trying to sell your theme when you're trying to make sure that what you're doing is felt all throughout the model you don't just want to make a couple of small changes like oh i'll replace one arm and put a little mask on him and call it a day it's often the very little touches that help sell the theme 
Hence all this grieving you see me doing with all these tubes and these little pieces and parts that are coming out the his of his body and making him seem more monstrous, more nightmarish, more like a scientific creation than a traditional flesh and blood creature. So here, uh, we're going to use one of those little cogs. I laid down some, some super glue, and then I just pushed that uh, little cog in there. So it looks like he's a little bit of a clockwork machinery where a cog is coming out of his side and theoretically spinning. I cut the cog in half, and you'll notice it doesn't fit exactly to his gut. There's a little bit of a gap there. That's okay. Don't worry. We can fix that. You'll see how we're going to fix it in a couple steps. But... The first thing I do is make sure it's actually attached, then apply, and in this case, I did have to use super glue because I'm attaching a metal piece to plastic, so I can't use the, the goo alone. But I then build out the bridge between the two pieces with a little bit of more of the ultra gel uh, control. Now that that's dry, then I'm going in with the plastic glue, or sorry, the sprue goo, and I'm painting over that joint connection. And you might say, why the heck are you doing this? Remember, painting with sprue goo is like painting with plastic. And so in doing so, I can actually make it seem like that thing has pulled some of the skin out with it. I'm also attaching a little antenna to his head because in my mind, all of my giants are remote controlled by their, by their boss who built them. And that will make it look like that, uh, both in the case of that antenna and the little cog, that it's more connected. All right, let's talk about chain. Let's say you wanna do a nice big chain arm, where, so where you got chain wrapped around. That's what we're gonna do here. I start in the crux of his arm and I dropped a little bit of super glue in there. Then I pulled the chain up through it. So the bottom part of it is hidden in the armpit of his, you know, in his armpit where you can't see it. Then I'm going to wrap the chain around him tightly. Okay, in whatever fashion. And crisscrosses tend to look good as opposed to just straight wraps. So like a an X pattern in the chain will often look good. And then you want the chain to end in a location that will also be out of sight. In other words, the connection points of things like wrapped chain, put them in places where you can't see them. So here the the, the end of the chain and the beginning of the chain are both hidden, right? The arm, the beginning of it was hidden in his armpit. The end of it is hidden on sort of underneath his arm, underneath a bunch of other stuff. Once that chain has been wrapped and the beginning and end have been attached nice and tightly, you want to take a little super glue thin, and you'll notice I'm just going to dab a little bit of that along there, along there. I'm just running down the length of each chain, and this super glue thin will run like crazy. I mean, it has the consistency of water it just goes everywhere and i'm just touching all of those little chains with just a tiny little bit of super glue thin and what that does is that soaks into the chain and hardens it and solidifies it in place so that that way it doesn't it's not moving around it's not scraping stuff when you paint it becomes solid and you notice there i can push it around it's not moving that chain is now solid and in place and that just makes it a lot easier to paint later, later, you don't have other problems. Now, to further hide the start of this chain, we're gonna give him a cool little shoulder pad. And so this is another thing you can do is whenever you have chains, it's cool to just attach stuff to chains um, because it makes sense that the model would have a couple different things attached to the chain. So here, again, I've taken some of my sprue goo, and even though uh, there is metal underneath there, there's a lot of plastic for it to bond to. And I'm gonna use, this is the uh, back plate from a, I think like an auric brute, like an iron jaw brute. Um, and so I had a couple extra of those. So putting that on there and then just making sure that glue is down in there everywhere where there should be connections. And then bada boom, he's got a nice little, you know, upper arm plate now or shield or something like that that he's, he's using to deflect blows. Final couple pieces and greaves to attach in other things just to break up space. Uh, and this guy's more or less ready to go. Now, like I said, this is a lengthy process when you go through and do all this. Don't try to rush big conversions. My honest answer is it's a lot of fun doing this and the grieving process of just throwing on little bits and creating a little narrative for what each one is doing in your head is really fun. You can 
regardless of what you're doing, like I know I'm doing something that most sort of AOS players might not want to do. Although if you're a 40k player and you want to make some really horrible monstrosities uh, in like your your uh, your Dark Eldar, this is a great tutorial. Um, you notice I put another cog coming out of his spine. I thought that was cool. I like stuff coming out of spines is really creepy and awful, so that's great. And now we're just attaching some final tubes and we'll call it a day. Now, as I said, the key with this is have fun. Test different bits. Move them around in different places when you set them down. Don't look at a bit as being only that bit that it is. Cut bits, change bits, use things in unusual ways. His top tentacle, that's part of a giant vermin lord tail, right? Like, you can use these things for anything. You just pay attention to the shapes, not the bit. So there you go. Give that a like if you liked it. Subscribe for additional hobby cheating in the future. But as always, I thank you very much for watching this one, and we'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.